Once again, it's time, time for the feedback loop. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. Busy, busy, busy day um, here in the loop. We've got uh, five students uh, with work that has been submitted. Lisa, uh, James, Rebecca, Katie, Kara, all in the loop today. Uh, I'm gonna start in the order in which it was submitted. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get this underway. And Kara's visual foundation file is here. And basically what Kara's working through is the exercise where we are doing some discovery on potential, potential typography and color combinations that might be used, um, that, well, that might be, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to turn off the columns and I thought I could group all of the, um, thought I could group them all and turn them off, but apparently I cannot, and that's that's sad. That, that, I'm sad. I'm all the sads about that. Anyway, um, there, now we can see. The whole point of this exercise is to do some exploration. There's nothing, there's nothing that necessarily says that she's going to have to utilize these fonts or the colors on her project, but um, it doing some some exploratory work away from the project itself is always helpful because you start you allow yourself to kind of envision a few a few different combinations without applying them directly to the work. The moment that you begin applying directly to the work, you there is a sense of an in, in, of investment. It's like, oh well, I went through and I've created the nav with that color scheme, so now I'm. I've taken one step toward implementing that throughout, or I've taken I've taken the time to create some components with this typography. It's like you want to do that investigation before you get to the project. So here she's um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hide my controls. There we go. Here she's using Work Sans, uh, really nice nice uh, typeface. It has a lot of uh, weights to it which I like. I also like it when a typeface has italics. I don't think you can actually have, um, if you're gonna properly use um, language and, and like italicized titles and things like that, you've gotta have an italic. Um, but this is this is for display. And display, you, you're list, you, you have fewer usages for the display. Um, and then there's Meriwether. And Meriwether's down here, and I know I know Meriwether has a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility to it. It's a very nice serif. Um, so this is, she's looking specifically at Meriwether regular, um, and that's fine. Let's uh, let's come over here. So here we've got Noto Sans regular and Noto serif, and this is one of those cases where it's like a super family in that, uh, much like IBM Plex. Uh, which is what I what I include as the the reference point uh, for exercise for this for this uh, particular exercise. Um, Noto has a has a sans, and um, it Noto not only has like a lot of weights, it also has a lot of italics, uh, which I, I like the I like the flexibility there. Um, but then it also features a serif, and you know there's a lot of interesting. There's a lot of interesting uh, advantages that you gain when you utilize uh, a serif and a sans that are from the same basic family. Um, and I've done this a lot with IBM Plex uh, because IBM Plex is a open source typeface that you can use anywhere. I actually used IBM Plex in my last project um, for just this reason. It's meant to be utilized together. So... Um, that said, it's not the most creative thing in the world to do. Um, obviously, you can come up with a lot more possible options when you are pairing two typefaces that were not designed together, like Work Sans and Meriwether. So here, you know, this is uh, this is a fine combination. Uh, it's a little it's a little meaty. Um, that um, you know, and what I mean by that is that bold typeface uh, for the headline. Um, it definitely uh, it feels very heavy. Um, I feel like even though even though Meriwether Meriwether structurally it feels like a more substantive uh, typeface, um, it doesn't feel as heavy when used for the header. So I like 
I kind of like the pairing the other way. And I think for this particular project, um, the Work Sands Merriweather combination may be t just too blunt, too brash compared to Merriweather, Merriweather leading and then Work Sands being used as a um, as a body text. So I, I, I like the second one there, but again, this is your project, not mine. Um, and when you when you get down here. And you begin looking at some of the combinations. Actually, this label style that you have here for um, where Work Sans is coming in and, and acting as a label, all caps, and then and then you have it over the top of Merriweather. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, but and this is where some of the some of the the, the quandary comes in. Like uh, I like it. I like it a little more here and a little less there. Um, you can you can mix these things up if you if you like um the the key is the key is making sure everything has a consistent job to do um like if that's going to be your label that's going to be your label and this is going to be your body text it's going to be your body text but like using it consistently throughout the design helps establish so many other things um we come in here to buttons and forms and you know i i was talking with um i forget who i was talking with last week about um, items that have a serif and what I've uh, uh, for the button and one of the things I've determined is if it's a if it's a sans serif like you can get a, on buttons you can get away with things that are that are pretty tight um, and if it's a serif I really feel like you've got to you've got to like really give it some room to breathe um, and, and that's because the you know the the um, the serif structurally is just a little more complex and it, it needs more room to kind of operate um, versus um, versus a sans serif, um, especially a sans serif that's all capped like this one. So, and I, I still think that even, even the sans serif that's all capped, it works a little better when it's got some space. I just, I just feel, I, I, I've determined that in my heart of hearts when when we have a serif inside of a button it's just it's just really smart to give it more room um artificial intelligence uh you know again for some reason that that works better for me than the headline but it's still like it's still really bold um not really sold on it this isn't bad um, I would probably go with a lighter weight, like that medium's just not, it's just not really working, but the light works. I don't know if I go with extra light, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like that medium is it, like you either go, and I don't, I'm not sure why this is, but with quantum, you either go or not quantum, uh, with uh, quantum is the word there, but with work sands, you either go, if you go like just regular, it's just not great. Um, additionally, like, I, I don't necessarily think the negative four, I, like the negative four was in there with Plex, um, but I don't think that that sort of spacing really works well with the others. So just, you know, keep, a, keep an eye on that. I mean, even over here, like the spacing is, spacing could, could use some more work and, it, and that's negative two and that's zero. Okay. So let's come over to pairing two, and and again, this is this is kind of what I what I was looking at. Um, I don't care for Noto as a serif. I it, I just I don't think it's as strong. Let's come down here and take a look at. It's interesting. So again, here you've got medium. I might look at regular, uh, just to just to get these just a, a bit further away. Here you've got black. Uh, would semi bold work a bit better? Maybe bold. You know, you're, you're trying to you're trying to uh, you're striving to find the right tone, and I I don't necessarily know if if any of these. Yeah, let's put that back to black and put this down to medium. But it, it's 
it's uh, it's not just the application. It's it's also like the the working with different weights and kind of trying different combinations. Um, you know, it, serifs are pretty easy. You, you know, it's probably regular or medium uh, it, for body copy. It's never going to be like extra bold. That's that's you know that that part is always easier to, to nail down. And it, and it's because the serif has again, it's a little more complex of a structure. It has uh, the serifs on it, and and typically, like um, you know, the the sans here is very monostroke. Uh, there's not a lot of variation, but with the serif, uh, there's a lot of variation. Um, you can look at the you can look at the structure of the Y and kind of see that var variation on display, and that's why um, that's why you, you don't necessarily want to go super bold uh, with those because some, the areas that are thick. On a on a um, on a variable stroke uh, serif, they, they get really thick, so so it gets kind of uh, out of control. Um, it works here at a smaller size, but I don't think that it would work very well at the larger size. Um, these combinations are fine. Um, it's funny, I I kind of like this label this all caps label a little more here than I like the um, I like um, this Noto as a as a headline and you know same thing applies to the buttons this is this is pretty nice work uh, just overall I think you've got some you've got the the big thing here and, and we we've talked about it before is are you creating are you creating options for yourself to, that are that are plausible okay nothing that I've seen here is in the realm of oh god that's just a terrible combination okay every every bit of the commentary that I've given you over the past five minutes has been oh this is nice maybe a little tweaking here the thing that I like and I, you know Kara's Kara's got a real strength here a real eye for this um, because she's been she's been doing publication design for years she she knows this space this is her wheelhouse um but when you're when you're working on a brand you are um you're trying to come up with a combination that works for that brand and everything that's here is pretty close and i'm actually curious um yeah from afar noto and merriweather they're so like if if you when you zoom out and look at these, they are so, like Meriwether. I can tell after looking at it for a minute, it's just a little taller uh, than Noto. Um, but all that all that aside, you've got two sets of pairing options that are I think equal. Uh, I would just I would just pick the one that. You feel most comfortable with, um, and obviously, when you get into branding, which I believe is the next exercise, um, there are more constraints put on this uh, because uh, with branding, it's a it's about matching the tone and creating embodying the I identity of the organization, um, and in concert with part two of this exercise, which is color. Now. You, uh, you've gone the route of, uh, you know, in the example I was, I was, I was building this off of, um, off of images, going the mood board route. Uh, you know, you get the warm, cool colors over here for reference. Um, what's interesting to me is, uh, you know, the pink, the pink green is is really vibrant. Orange blue. There, there's there's a lot of complement here. And then there's this analogous, more nature feel down here. And when I when I look at the application, I'm a lot more interested in the color combinations when I see them when I see them up here um, than I am necessarily when I get down here to application. Uh, so so here we have uh, we have get an idea of what. Of how you might utilize these these colors, so I'm seeing I'm seeing you know, here in market. This is going more for a um, for a material design sort of approach where 
you're you're applying a tone uh, to the main uh, color and like this looks like it's selected like we're on that page here you're, you're saying okay I'm just going to use color as maybe an action item uh, and you're, you're kind of replicating that down here uh, let's look over here it's very similar um, except here instead of going dark you go up um, you know, orange is orange is always one of those one of those color combinations that it gets muddy as it gets dark um, it can kind of get brownish um, and that probably brown is not a great color um, although it can be used and I, and I try to stress this when people ask they're like what color combination should I use and it's like you can use any co color combinations how you apply it that really matters um, the order now I get a sense that like if I hovered over it it would get, like glow or uh, get, get darker um, so so that's that's a nice usage here you know I don't think the I don't think the the top display is really working um, and I wonder if if just making the typography instead of trying to make it this darker green if just making it black would work you know would that would that solve this riddle obviously you couldn't make it white because then there, there'd be accessibility issues um, particularly down here on ordering but making it black might make it pop and allow you to use that green in the background um, again this is just this is just to allow you a chance to look at the colors in action um, you obviously don't have to use all the colors like you didn't use the dark blue here um, you um, didn't use the dark greens but but it is it is helpful to kind of get a sense of what's possible um, from when I think about you know the it's it's food you know and, and looking at the things that I've seen uh, it tends to be vibrant um, but you could totally take it this other direction where it's more of a, a pastel um, approach and softer um, it really comes down to looking at the competition to the right and the left and, and kind of clearing a lane for yourself so that you have a you, identity that stands out by itself while also meeting all the criteria about color usage and accessibility that comes along with that so it's it's not just selecting colors that are going to create an identity they also have to function as well so um, good job here I I don't have a you know th this part is a little less cut and dry um, it's hard to it's hard to see a bad combination um, from one of the, one of these test situations it is easy to see like okay there's not enough variation here to you, there's some sort of adjustment that needs to be made for this color combination to work uh, so so you can spot things like that in this color palette approach um, but I will leave this here for you you've all obviously got some uh, good ideas to work with and I think it's full speed along to the next exercise um, let's jump over here to Katie so Katie is Katie's working through the she she is where Kara was and she's working through the first exercises in the UI program and part of that process is working working through some exercises about establishing hierarchy and one of the challenges in this exercise is working through um, working with a series of photos and in, in this one, it's utilizing a horizontal focus with just nature photos, all right? And yes, there are other images down here. Um, they are there for a particular reason. Um, Katie, it looks like you've, you have avoided the, you've avoided the telltale uh, issue that always pops up here when, you know, I say nature vertical focus and I see a bridge photo. Um, the content does matter. Um, at, you know, whatever project you happen to be working on, um, I want to make sure that you are doing it. You are cognizant of the things that um, could could um, impact um, the, um, the 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 way people receive the work. And a lot of times, anytime that you anytime that you have um, co content 
in in the work that doesn't apply it degrades away from the success of the solution here you manage to you know you're not mixing a bunch of nature photos in with the bridges nor are you uh, mixing a bunch of bridge photos in with nature although there's this one but it's it's the trick one it's the trick one because it's a natural bridge ha ah. all right so a couple things um, I know we ha this is not a grid exercise and spacing, but I always like to point out that this becomes a stronger design the moment that we the moment that we begin to uh, oh I can't I can't edit this can I nope I can't edit it because it hasn't been shared all right so this design gets better if you just take the time to basically get these very even squares of interior space uh, into the design. Uh, if I was going to work on this, I would probably um, I'd probably crop off some of this, uh, some of the image to the the le the right of the uh, waterfall, and I would add it back so I you know so I can I can get a little bit more of where this bridge connects up, um, making making it a little wider. This begins to shift the focus here um, because we go from the flower and then you can't make a decision about where to look down below but if we shifted this made this photo a little smaller you can go one two three in a very orderly fashion uh, because you're, you're dictating for people what do I want you to look at right now I go straight to the flower and then I kind of meander down below I want to make the, I want to make specific decisions for the viewer as they are working through it, okay? Um, and I, while also paying attention to those interior spaces. Um, here we get the shoreline. That's a really great photo. Um, I love all the, all the photos used here. Um, again, spacing, just, you know, you're, you're narrow. You're, you're just a tad narrow here by comparison to here. I'm always looking for, I'm always looking for either exaggerated spacing or exact spacing the in between is where you get into trouble um, the only thing I might say is that this photo is troublesome at a small size okay um, and again I realize this is a hierarchy exercise Chris why are you talking about why are you, why why are you so damn caught up on whether this photo can be displayed well or not well it's because those details matter if you know, right now it it's kind of a green smudge. Okay, um, I would I would rather you utilize three photos here instead of the fourth because I can't really see it. Um, and if you did that, if you made this one larger and this one, you know, like if let's say you lost the middle one, which is a really cool photo. Um, but if you lost the middle one, you'd be able to get more detail out of this and this, or you could you know you could crop this one as well. Um, this this photo with the with the um, island I think would probably have a better crop if it was like that um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of dead sky I mean the the interesting thing about this photo isn't the sky it's the fa it's the 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 fact that you're shooting through water you're seeing underwater and you're seeing the, the land in, in the distance um, so think about those things again I realize this is you know uh, photo cropping was and photo cropping and shapes was not the thrust of this exercise, but I, I like to use these opportunities to talk about um, ways to make these better. Um, same thing here, you know, when we, when we talk about crops, um, you know, one of the things that I, I dislike about the usage of this photo is the fact that we're cropping the top of that first arc off. We can come down here and kind of see what that really looks like. That's a that's a really nice photo, but because we cropped the top of the bridge off, that just become it 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 loses a lot. Um, I would rather crop off some of the, you know, I would rather reshape this and crop off some of this leading rail here than crop off like the top the tippy top of the mountain, if you will. Um, think about when you look at a mount, a photo of mountains. Nobody ever crops off the top peaks. Um, you know, you want to see th you want to see them end. Um, Singapore here, Singapore um, is you know the the trees, really, really great signature iconic thing. 
Um, also very hard to walk walk around. You got to get there really early to go up into the tree and take the walkway. Um, when the photo is cropped as it comes to you, you're just doing the best you can with what you have. This one, you don't have the first peak, um, I believe. Yeah, yeah you, d you don't have that first peak available to you. Um, so, you know, you you basically, you have to, you have to work with what's there. Um, so, but, you know, the real thrust of this was horizontal. How do I, you know, I've got to have a horizontal lead um, because that's, that's what the, the target was, okay? So you did okay. I would work on, I'd just look out for crops like this. Um, you know, here you ob obviously went without space between, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, most of the time, like in print, you would probably have some sort of space, but online, you very rarely put space into situations like that. Maybe you, maybe you hover over and like the, s the name of the location comes up. Either way, I, I think it's fine. Um, there, you know, now here, this is a, this is really interesting. Um, so you have vertical focus and, you know, as we, as we, this is in Mumbai and I forget where that one is. Um, it's a really interesting photo. It's like a walkway bridge. Um, so yeah, it's a bridge meant for people to walk across. Um, but I, I digress. Um, it's a really interesting, beautiful crop. I, I do wonder if it would benefit from be, from this being, from this one being trimmed a bit. Like I think you could, you know, you could pull this much off of the photo and give it to the other one. And I think you could still have vertical focus uh, on this photo. But but um, or, or maybe you just you just crop this one in such a way that you know it's you know more like that uh, if, if you're worried about if you're worried about it having enough impact um, right now this is kind of in the middle of the image and I would rather it you know when we talk about rule of thirds you know the first third is here and the second third is here and you really want this this H if you will to line up either here or here it's just kind of meandering in the middle and again this is something that we'll work on as as you go through but it's this it's these items where they kind of meander um, like the image the the spacing isn't quite right the the crop doesn't it doesn't fall into one camp or the other it's not really centered either so you know you're cropping I can see I can see the the need to adjust the cropping adjust the spacing these are the hallmarks of a, of a new designer, okay? So um, I'm s these little things that I'm picking up on, Katie, th those are just things that we're going to work on getting out of your system as we move forward. But, um, but overall, you know, the one thing I do like is that you're paying attention to the, pay you're paying attention to the assignment, you're able to, you're able to keep up with them. Um, you know, it's not like this is over your head at all. And then, um, and then strategic use of space. And this this exercise is really focused on can again can you can you take the shapes that you've been provided with um, and and make sense of them. Here you have emphasis top. Um, so here you've you've uh, utilized a nav bar. You've pay, placed the photo up here. Um, I would suggest. Um, this is you know i would suggest like making this design function in such a way where you know the typography is basically to this half rather than kind of bleeding over her face um you can it, this is something that you'll learn more about in front end um but you know setting up in, in halves here um emphasis left so you've you've really kind of put all the focus on the typography what helps is that she's looking back at it, which is uh, which is good. That you're, we're not quite in any sort of grid. Um, like here, I felt like we had a grid, th the inner workings of a grid happening. Um, here, 
Like it's it's far less less uh, you know nothing nothing's really lining up. Like that kind of lines up, but I'm not really sure what's happening on the other side. The space so the spacing here. We'll get in the grids. This isn't a grid exercise, but but you know it, it's messy right now. All right, the emphasis is left. Yeah, that works. So how can we do this again? Um, this is where, you know, I really thought there was a second. Thought there, well, anyway, um, this is where this logo really needs to, to be. Well, I can't edit it. Um, cropping here. Uh, yeah, yes, you put the typography over here. You put the these elements over here as well, but as I stated before, nothing's really quite lining up. Um, everything's a little off. Okay, um, I would, you know, I'm gonna I wanna jump in and take a look at something real quick. Community. Hey, there's the avatar illustration system, by the way, folks. Uh, new Prague. Yeah, let me type. Ah, come on. Did my keyboard died? I don't know. It's okay. New pew. Pragmatic. Uh, yeah, let's go in here. So I like looking around here because I like looking at the tools. Um, yeah, okay. Well, you did the best with what you with what you had. Um, you know, you were given you were given these shapes. I think in the next exercise, um, and I, I have to full disclosure. Sometimes I have to remind myself exactly what tool what Legos I gave you to build with. In the next exercise, I will look for this to 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 really level up in terms of spacing because it's it's grids. So, um, you know, did you create emphasis on the left? Yeah, and I think that you know, you know, you get, the guiding factor here is there's really only only one way to util, utilize this Im image. You can't you can't really put her over here, like she, you can't flip her over because she's you know she's looking. Then if you moved her, she'd be looking off the page. So your natural inclination to create focus works. I just I think you know if I was going to do anything differently with her, I would look at you know. Right now, you've left the you left the door in, and the door has nothing to do with what's going on. the The crop I would be looking for on her would be like this. Okay, that crop. You got the plant. You got the phone. Um, that's a much more Im impactful uh, crop. And like here, we got an exit sign. That's that's you know. Again, it comes back to the little details that go into that go into um, into a successful uh, um, combination. Now, I'm taking a little note, because sometimes when these things come along, it's just like, that, that's inspiration for, hey, we need, a, we need an exercise for that. Um, Because guess what, Katie? You are not the only person that has done that before. Okay. That said, let's move along. Kara, that's good work there. We'll come back. We'll come back to this. You folks will be seeing a video on this later today on presenting your work. Um, so that's Kara. That's Katie. Uh, oh, Katie, you've also got your your sketching exercises, and this is. Um, you know, right now you've thrown them into to Google Docs, and that's fine. Um, so it was Frank and Oak, Figma, yeah, uh, yeah, Figma, um, Amazon Cart, and Open Table. The the big takeaway that I'm hoping that you're seeing through this uh, through this walkthrough, Katie, is that. Um, like here, this this drop down, understanding like what's inside of one of those drop downs, and really wrapping your head around. Oh, when I click this, I get this. I get I get to see 
a significant expansion of, of possibilities for the site. That is a common design pattern, as is this concept of a form popover that walks you through the onboarding process. Additionally, the shopping cart in, in the way that details are t details are to the left and then and then a summary is to the right. And then finally here with open table, um, it is an overview. You click and then in the click through you get you get the details. The whole point of this exercise is A to get you sketching really quickly, but also to have you doing research on common design patterns. Uh, one of the big reasons I included schedule, you know, open table uh, here is that as the economy reopens, more and more businesses are going to be set up around the concept of making an appointment. Okay, so um, I see a I see a huge opportunity here for for you to do a lot of ex exploration. You, you've done a good job here. Um, this is what I was looking for. Um, the big thing, the big takeaway here is that we're talking about things that happen, actions that happen over time, not a single page. We're, we're never talking about, let's go sketch a home page. We're talking about, let's sketch an interaction, okay? So as we, as we look at these things, I always want to be thinking about, I, wa I want to be thinking about uh, parts of our projects being multiple steps to help to help a person solve a to, to reach a conclusion and I think that you've begun the process of beginning to see that so these are very good all right so James we're now to James uh, James has his second draft of this case study um, he's got this over on medium the whole point of having it on medium he's, is he does not have a, a portfolio yet so um, Katie, this is much like what you were working on. Uh, Katie was really quickly getting her fresh market case study on the medium. James is doing something similar, except he's got a, a project called Squawk that he's been he's been working on. And um, let's see here. He says uh, I added visuals to the top as a hook. Tried to reduce the the size of the prototype videos. Also tried to restructure based on the advice. Um, refining copy, finishing prototype, adding link, add reflections, things I decided not to do. Okay, let's take a look at what you got. So um, right away, this might be a little deep. Um, you know, I, I think what I would what I would suggest doing is um, maybe maybe something like this. Um, and I would I would then bring these up. Um, the whole the whole point being I, I, I think you want to be able to, I think you want to see or something like this frankly. Um, you want to you know you want to see this, but you also want to like get a sense that oh there's a <laughs> there's it isn't just like oh hey it's a picture all right. Um, so some anything that allows your allows your headline to like p poke up over the top there, even if it even if it's like that, um, anything's better than that. Um, although this is better than that, and of course this wasn't here either. So it's all it's all moving in the right direction. Um, Squawk improving podcast discovery in a, in, in, a, in a connected world. Squawk is a conceptual podcast. Uh, this is one of those situations where if, if I was doing my my portfolio, I would have the video over here, and I would have all of the information over here. Uh, but you're working within medium, so you're doing the best with what you have available to you. All right. So like, like I want to like I would rather have it moved around, but this is medium. Um, so Squawk is a conceptual podcast app that empowers users to find the shows they care about. Uh, the discovery experience assists users by displaying shows. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, podcast. Now, this is this is kind of inter interesting because it kind of jumps around. Um I don't necessarily know that I, I, 
I like the you know going all bold here then going kind of a light gray here and then jumping to an entirely different design here um, so so I would say a simplification if it's just getting these two to kind of work in concert together fine um, but having the three different so close together is is a bit jarring so either either simplify these down to work alike or make these two work more together so that when we get the context it feels like okay now we're starting a different section right now it feels like you know uh, section 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 when in fact it should feel like you know from squawk down to in the solution is basically a section and then context is another section okay so simplification there uh, how you how you do it is really up to you but I would I would simplify it because um, so every time we every time we change typography it like it in it in, in, in it implies another voice is happening um, really pay attention to me don't pay attention to me as much okay now let's start another conversation so like simplification um, so here's the context and um, I can tell that you're kind of you're, you're, you're trying to make medium work for you as much as you can um, if I click this I think it's gonna yeah okay so here it opens up the flow and that's fine um, and here's a screenshot and here's the business impact uh, somebody's like hey you you have a podcast um, choosing the correct social identity so here's some research um, here there, you're talking about there's a pattern that emerges uh, how are podcast apps currently handling uh, they're not and this is all about again discovery um, what's interesting is like these two things really work together but they you know you you really focus on the answer without really you know if you're scanning through I, I I can see you totally missing the question like here's the answer but this is the question like how can we get those paired together one of the things that I know medium will allow you to do is it allow you to insert little little images um, you know kind of kind of like you did here I might can I might come back with like some simple line work you know and you can insert lines I think I think the lines are would be extremely helpful here um, in helping in helping to break this up but also but also make it to where you you're less reliant on new type style here new type style there um, a simplification if you will um, this is another one of those areas where a line above and below might work better than than this sort of approach um, this is one thing I hate about screenshots is the typography gets like really big. Um, so here's like the before after. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what this like. I'm I'm looking at this trying to I'm, I'm trying to read across like. Does this apply to what what's going on? And from the start, because this is black and black and white, and this is black and white, I kind of do. And then this is blue, so the blue comes in the orange. I'm like, well, the orange doesn't fit with anything. Only then do, am I like, oh wait, maybe this is its own thing. Um, and it is its own thing. Uh, ideation is really focused on these, and the iterate interface is focused on below that. So um, I, I think the, the mixture of these ideas is not necessarily working together. Um, when I look at this, I, I do wonder why the listener stories are A, blurry, but B, larger than listener stories, host stories, guest stories. 
Um, my gut says that if I was going to do this, I'd probably pick one of each, like you've done here. Um, like pick one, go across one, two, three, and then I would I would link to the rest of them. Um, as we go through here, we've got the podcast and. This is kind of showing the, the progression. And I think that that is working pretty well. Um, you, can kind of, you can kind of tell where, you know, uh, you'd kind of, you'd, you'd done a lot of work on this before we ever started collaborating together. So this is where James and I started collaborating together. And this is where it ended up once we had kind of worked together. And um, a lot of it, James, is spacing and just simplification. You know, our, our theme is our theme is still the same. Uh, simplification, simplification, simplification. It's like Chris is banging on a tin drum over here. Um, but I, I think overall, you're you're definitely heading on the right path. Um, testing and. Obviously, you're you're still working on this part down here. Um, it is interesting. Um, I'm not. Sh there, there's an image missing here. Um, I think we need to spend some more time down here on testing and interactions. Um, again, is it is it just you know a simple bit of line work will allow us to simplify the typography? Um, I don't want to get the, I don't want to get this into where you're drawing lines everywhere, but I do want to simplify, uh, all the, all the volume switching that I'm sensing happening as we go through. But I do think the flow here for, uh, iteration is working better. I would simply, I would edit this. I would do more, I would I'd do more to simplify your stories. Um, I might even, I might even simplify this a bit. Um, you know, right now you've got one, two, three, four, five. I might lose one of these wireframes. I'm not sure if it's this one or this one. Um, but I, you know, just make it a little shorter, um, link to all of the assets. Like I'm not sure I, I wasn't seeing where is there a link somewhere in here to where I can go look at all of the visual assets that you have? I don't see it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I would I, I would simplify this a bit. I would look at inserting line work. I would I would I hope that I kept thinking maybe there was a link down here that I was missing. I want to see links to these assets uh, so people can go dive into them deeper. Um, I would simplify these listener stories. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that I think that that's uh, those are the those are the next moves I'd make. All right, Lisa, you're working on the Wonder Dog case study, the outline survey results in the Chewy audit. Should I visually represent it uh, in the survey section right now? I outlined the survey section why the business pivoted from European inspired bags to more utilitarian style of bag. Is it, in, is it some type of chart graph? Is some type of chart graph really necessary here? Can an explanation based on survey results be enough? Okay, so let's go over here and take a look at Lisa. Uh, we're talking about Wonder Dog. Um, so, okay, this is nice. Um, so Lisa's included. Um, some of her sketches uh, to help us. Uh, let's see. It says click on it. Okay. So that, that walks you through the the video. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. James is James's video. Um, I am curious what medium is. Let's look at this real quick. Because James's video is playing right here in medium. Where is James hosting his video? Um, 
Oh, it looks like James is hosting it on Miro. That's interesting. So that might be a that might be a, an option for you, Lisa, because um, uh, Squarespace, which is what Lisa's using, uh, there was a lot of issue with just getting the video to play. Um, okay, so we're talking about going down here and. Um, so here's Chewy. This does immediately work a lot better. Although, there, can you see the, the slight color difference in the background? Um, I'm just going to zoom in. Um, like, there might be hard for you to see this on the stream, but there is a, you can tell this is white and this is like an off gray. So that's something that I would, I would look out for. Um, obviously, if you uploaded it as a PNG, you can make it transparent, although there, that carries a, a cost size with it. Um, but it's it's one of those things that always bugs me about these light gray backgrounds, um, and I, I use them too. Okay, I use them too. Um, but you have to you have to kind of look out when things shift on you. Always get these little little weird edges. Um, so. I believe that this is what you're talking about. Um, 47 respondents stated that accordingly. Uh, stated accordingly, they want it. I, I just say stated they want it. Comfort, durability, easy to clean. Comfort, durable, easy to clean ventilation. Lose the um, and lose the dash there. Um, it's interesting. Now this is a lot better, Lisa. Um, although this the Nike is still kind of jumping around on you. Um, yeah, th this case study is a lot better already, though. Um, I don't know what the triadic color scheme is here for. Um, I know I know that Chewy has a, a color scheme that goes a lot of different directions, but I don't necessarily know if I would include it. Um, Yeah, so let's go back to your initial questions. Is the yeah? I don't think you. I don't think like you know putting a bar graph here isn't going to help things. It's. Like it's gonna it's gonna make zero impact on on whether somebody thinks that you did a good job on this or not. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I I can say that this is already taking steps forward from where you were. So I, I think so long as you can get, continue that trajectory, you're fine. Um, you know, I, the next thing I want to I want I want to kind of see. My, my ultimate suggestion here would be like get all the assets together get Chewy, get Amazon get Nike together and say okay these are all going to be presented in the same way um, because again you're, you're, you're utilizing Squarespace and you kind of have to pre-edit everything before you put it in there because if you don't things are just going to kind of blow up and go their own direction um, so I would, I would get these things in alignment together before before you put them into uh, Squarespace, um, and again, this this is reading a lot better side side saddled than this is, where it's going all the way across. Um, um, this is this is not working very well. Like it says, learn, and then there's the photo of the dog, and then there's stuff here and this this is just kind of getting lost in between I, I maybe maybe ditch it I, I don't I don't know that it, learn competitive analysis I don't know that this adds a lot before I get sidetracked though I want to make sure that we're looking at your other questions um, should I use Vimeo for my videos so let's see what your friend is doing here I haven't looked at your friend's site so I don't know much about it I do like the fact that, you know, for me, this is a much easier to read. Uh, this is this typography is much easier to read. Uh, it's larger. 
So here's Vimeo. And is this an app or it's it's like I don't know, it this this doesn't look like look like UX work. Um, it looks like fashion work. So I don't necessarily think that you can like compare the two. This is um this is you know, this is photography and fashion and display. It's not it's not UX. Um so I, I don't see you know I am I'm curious about you said that the this part you were this was your friend, what are they using? Um Yeah, so they're on a Squarespace as well. Um, again, yeah, the video works fine, but it's it's horizontal. Like you have a vertical video, okay? So you know we need to do some more investigation there. But I wouldn't just I wouldn't just throw a horizontal video that has a vertical video inside of it onto my portfolio. I just wouldn't do it. Um, so, um, oh, that's Rebecca. We'll come to you in a second. Uh, productive meeting. Um, so it looks like you're, you've got, um, need to figure out how, what the user journey for a health manager using Orion. So part of this is figuring out uh, what the user journey is for a health manager right now. Like, what do they do before they're using Orion? If you can map that out, you can then begin to look at, okay, how would that, how would that journey change when, or they, when they have Orion versus what they're doing right now. So you, like, I think the first thing that you need to do is you need to go talk to a health manager and talk to them about how are you solving the problem now? All right, that, that needs to be like job one. Once you do that, you can then begin to legitimately make a user journey involving the project that you're working on. So go do that before you do anything else re re related to Orion. Um, working on a UX audit for 2SI, some questions I want to ask, to walk through on Format is not where it's supposed to be. I want to flush up some ideas before I do. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need access. So I'm going to request access. We will come back to that, Lisa. Um, it happens. How feasible uh, is it to have the following features implemented into the surf site? If I get the top of the one. Uh, great question. Uh, online ordering confirmation email. Yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, time notifications where the board that I I don't know because where the board is so what you're talking about there in terms of notifications that's going to require your who, the person the person that owns the surfboard shop they have to have some method of updating where the board is in the production cycle and if that's if that's them coming over and saying hitting a button that says notify the user that their board is now shipped um you know ebay does that like when a, you know oh uh interior you know when when the seller enters the fedex tracking number it then says hey your your shipment is is shipped and here's the tracking number um so the, that time notification, that can be a lot of things, but some of that may already be built, but it's not going to be automated to the point that it, like the guy finishes sanding the board and then a notification sent. He's going to have to still do some work on his side. 3D rendering of a board that's spun around like this. Um, honestly, that's, you know, here's the, the board builder and, you know, this is going to require the board. You know, okay, so we got the 3D version of it here, right? Um, it's powered by Shape 3D. 
question I've got is, do they have shape 3D for the board? Is their board unique or can they, can they pick up a board? I'm gonna guess that their board is unique, you know, and I'm kind of interested, you can't see your fins, but I'm guessing if I, if I said fins, glass medium, 3D, does it give me the fins? I'm just curious. Does not give me the fins. So anyway, um, this 3D thing, shape 3D, I, I couldn't, I can't tell you if you can do that in Squarespace or not. Um, I do, I do think that it's going. It is a situation where uh, you're going to have to just research the platform to see if that's available. Um, I, I don't have any any uh, any experience here with uh, this 3D. Uh, but what I will say is that. By, if I was kind of mapping out like how this would work, I'm guessing that you have to um, you have to shoot the board and then upload it in you know such a way that it produces a small enough file to where you can zoom in and out like we're doing, um, and then flip it around like that. And that's you know that's not just you know regardless regardless of the of the platform. That's not just the platform. That's also input by the user having this file even available. Okay. Um, and 2SI persona. Yeah, I'll request access to that too. Okay, we'll come back to the rest of that. Um, we're down to Rebecca now. Uh, Rebecca had multiple errands and threats and opportunity section um okay well okay working on the case today now but for the feedback loop i wanted to ask for more feedback on the actual competitor analysis i was hesitant to share the file as is because i know i did it wrong in the threats and opportunities section i believe i'm supposed to write threats uh write the threats each company faces on its own and the opportunities they have to better themselves not their threats to me or opportunities uh, I found uh, for their product on my client site. If I was going to share this for analysis, I want it to look really good. So, is there any feedback that can improve it? Okay. So, um, let's take a look at your analysis. But I, I specifically take take a different tack. And surprise, um, I don't. I think you can do analysis. You can look at like the positioning. Um, so here's your competitive analysis, and here's Kronos, and here's the positioning. Here's the primary audience and the differentiation. I don't think that you can do the SWOT analysis, and here's why. Um, when we, this is from the competitive analysis uh, write-up that I have in, in new, at New Pragmatic. Strengths and weaknesses are internal. Okay. You have to have internal knowledge of the company to better understand, um, to better like to know your company's own limitations. You need to be inside the company. Like I can kind of guess what your limit limitations are standing outside, but I can't. I, I I don't know for sure. I might think that you have excellent management, and you feel like you have terrible management. I might think that you have a, a, an efficient workforce. You might think you have a very efficient workforce. Your, your internal strengths and weaknesses are, own, are known to only the people inside of that organization. Opportunities and threats, that you can generate. Like, I can, I can look at uh, Kronos and I can say, well, there's some opportunities and threats, but I really don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Like, I don't, I'm not in the company. So I don't think that you can actually create a SWAT for Kronos even though you have a SWAT here, um, I think I think you can you know you can talk about the opportunities and threats. Those are external factors. Uh, same thing for ultimate. Same thing for workday. What I do think that you can do is you can do a SWOT analysis for your organization, like this my click shift. Like when when I think about the SWAT, I think about Okay, the thing that I know the most about is my own company. What are our strengths and weaknesses? 
And what are the external opportunities and threats? Well, we can go after Kronos's market share because they are pivoting toward another thing. The threat is we have this ultimate software over here running up, running up our backside, doing price cutting. That's something that is a legitimate SWOT analysis for your company using the, the research that you've done on Kronos, uh, my, uh, the and the other groups. The big thing that I want to point out, though, is there's this known unknowns. What do I know that I don't know? Okay. In doing your research, you have uncovered areas of areas of ga that, that illuminate gaps in your knowledge. All right. You found facts that confirm what you thought you knew, what you thought you had research on. Those are the known knowns. Um, and then there's the unknown unknowns, which are things that exist outside of your limited field of vision. That's a much larger area. You hope that that area is not filled with a boogeyman that you should have seen a long time ago. The known unknowns are the things that, those are the next questions that I need to knock down. And I, I talk about known unknowns specifically in the UX program as things that we need to go talk to users about. There's a lot of analysis that we can do on competitors that will highlight what we what we need to know. All right, they'll highlight the questions that we should be asking. Those questions should be asked of users. Those are the known unknowns. I know that I don't have enough information about this, so I need to go in my next wave of research. I'm going to go ask questions about that. All right. Um, now. As it regards to my click shift, I think you can create a SWOT analysis of your company. I think you can utilize all the research that you've done to, to power that. Um, I would not go about writing a SWOT analysis for Kronos. You're not inside of their company. And without the ability to be inside of their company, I don't think you can legitimately create a SWOT um, for them. You can create a SWOT for you, but not for them. For them, you basically are breaking down, okay, here's what I see. Here are the details. You can write an executive summary up about that, and off you go. All right? So that's my two cents on that. Uh, Rebecca, I'll be sure to, to drop a link to this competitive analysis uh, doc into your, um, into your um, journal. And uh, holy moly, everybody, that was a... That was a run. I just want to make sure that we've got everybody covered. So that's Rebecca, that's Lisa, that's James, that's Katie, that's Kara. That's a wrap. That is a wrap. Thank you so much for joining me along for this uh, for this extended rapid fire version of feedback loop. I will um, I will see some of you in a few hours, and for the rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.